How are you guys doing today? Good? That was not excited <laughs> at, like, whatsoever. How are you guys doing today? Woo! All right, a little bit better. All right, I can work with that. So thank you all for coming to my workshop. We're going to be talking about on-chain verified credentials with Polygon ID. Um, a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Rahat. I'm the lead developer relations engineer over at Polygon. Previously been front-end engineer, Solidity engineer. I've done some anonymous work for various NFT rugs. I never said that out loud. Um, indie, hacker, Web3 enthusiast. Um, done some like failed startups in the past, so I can tell you everything that went wrong. I cannot tell you how to succeed. A um, few places you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, et cetera. Uh, but right now we're going to play a game. Um, this image is a claim. The claim is that I am a pixelated punk. Can you verify that these two images are the same? Yes or no? Yes? Am I a, am I, am I a pixelated punk? That's not the answer I was looking for. Yes. OK, cool. <laughs> so congratulations. You just participated in an IRL version of Polygon. What, what, what the hell was that, right? What, what does that actually mean? Before we get into that, a little bit of an introduction onto what Polygon ID actually is. So it's a blockchain native identity system with programmable privacy that empowers people, enables the creation of trusted interactions with Web3 services. I just read a definition for you. So that doesn't actually explain anything to you, right? Um, but what it does is it provides you a way of having a universal identity that you can take with you throughout your Web3 journey, right? You verify something um, at some point from some type of issuer. An issuer could be some government um, facility, a DMV issuing you a license, uh, someone giving you some credential saying that you graduated from some college. And um, you as a person are carrying around that credential. And at some point, someone needs to verify that this credential exists, right? So that's kind of like the flow that I want you to remember as we go through this. So this is called the triangle of trust. So in this case, um, the, the case that I showed you before here with the game that we played, uh, the triangle of trust exists this way. There's an issuer called Pixel Portraits. Shout out to Pixel Portraits if you want a NFT of yourself like that, they do this. Um, Pixel Portraits issued me an NFT it is an image of my likeness as a pixelated punk, right? The ID holder is me. I am holding this NFT. And I asked all of you to compare this ID, this um, you know, NFT, to myself, and let me know if you think it actually is me or not, right? So the way that this is done through Polygon ID is you have your issuer. You, that issuer issues some sort of claim. It can be, like I said, it can be some type of date of birth credential. It can be something like a, um, you know, diploma. It can be, are you the owner of X item or whatever it is. That issuer gives you that credential, and you never have to verify that you actually have that credential ever again. Because now you have different verifiers who just look at that credential and have some sort of trust with that issuer, saying, okay, I know this issuer. If this issuer says that this is, you know, the actual um, thing, I believe it. And that is done through a CK proof. So let's talk about what exactly we're going to be building for today. So many social media platforms require you to be 13 years or older to use them. Instagram, um, I think Twitter requires that. I don't know. I don't know how it's enforced or if it is enforced. But what we're going to do is we're going to leverage Polygon ID to issue a soul bound NFT based on a specific age credential. So we're gonna issue ourselves a claim. So we're not gonna use some like third party claim. We're not gonna like, you know, verify our age or anything. We're just gonna issue it to ourselves. Um, and that, is that claim is gonna contain our date of birth. We're gonna create a smart contract that mints a soul bound NFT as long as our age is over 13. And there's gonna be a front end where anyone with a Polygon ID wallet can claim this NFT. So all of this is contingent upon you folks downloading the Polygon ID uh, wallet app, which is available on the App Store as well as Google Play Store. There will be resources and links to download all of that 
when you start hacking it on yourselves. But demo and code time. So the first thing I wanted to show you was this Polygon ID platform. So I mentioned that we're going to be issuing the claims to ourselves. So we're not going to go through some you know, third-party issuer and have them like check our ID or do anything. We're just going to do it ourselves uh, just for the sake of this specific workshop. So this uh, platform here, uh, again, links will be um, sent out in Discord. I will also tweet them out. Um, and this platform here is on a testnet right now. So what you can do once you've gone onto the platform is create a schema. So I'm just going to create a sample schema here. Uh, we're going to call it MI13 or older. And the attribute name we'll say uh, is a KYC age credential. Name it whatever you want. And there are specific data types that are supported right now um, through these um, issue, issuing claims. You can have a Boolean, yes or no. You can have a date. So in this case, we're going to be using a date. Or you can have a number. So these are like different things you can think about when you're trying to issue specific claims. So we're just going to use the date because I'm going to be looking at a birthday. So if you want to put in a description, um, this will be birth date or whatever. Um, for each of these claims, you can add an expiration date if you want to. I'm not going to add one, so I'm going to uncheck this. But now you can either save your schema or save and offer the claim. So we're going to go ahead and save and offer the claim. So this claim has now been created. Now, inside of this attribute for my KYC age credential, I can select a date. Um, not going to use my real birthday, but let's, let's say I was born... I need to be at least 13, right? Okay. I will just say 1990, February 7th. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to put in an expiration date, so this claim is just going to exist forever. I'm going to hit generate claim offer, and this claim is going to be generated. And now we have this link. Copy this link, head over to it, and you'll see that you received a claim offer from Rahat. Rahat is me. I am the um, person who issued this claim, right? So now you would download your Polygon ID wallet app. You would scan this QR code. And then within your Polygon ID app, you're going to have a specific credential that says you are um, this specific age, right? So this is, again, a testnet version of you issuing yourself a claim to test out your, um, your Polygon dApps. Cool. So now... That's the first part, this is a claim. So this is kind of like the same thing as pixel portraits giving me an NFT of you know, my, my, my punk, right? Rather than a punk, now I'm getting a QR code with a claim that says I am whatever, however old I am. Cool, so now let's look at some smart contracts. So all of these contracts are gonna be shared and available for you to go through. Um, afterwards, so I'll, I'll drop them in the Discord as well as on Twitter, so you'll be able to take a look at these. But to get this set up, um, to actually start using Polygon ID with your smart contracts, there's a couple things you need to do. You're going to have a couple interfaces, libraries, and verifiers. You don't have to write any of this code. You can simply copy and paste from uh, the repositories that are going to be shared with you. Um, but just like a quick thing, if you just go through these, you'll see that these are uh, what's actually powering the ZK proofs and verifiers that are going to be looking at your credential and comparing them within the DAP. Um, all of these, again, are boilerplate code that you can just copy and paste. Where we're going to actually focus on and create our own code is going to be in this ERC721 verifier. So you'll see from line 8 through 10 that I imported all of those libraries. Um, eventually, what I'm hoping to do maybe later on is create like an NPM package so you can just install and import those rather than copy and pasting them. But that's, as we're iterating and building, that's what you gotta do for now. Um, so for this NFT drop, I have imported a couple things from Open Zeppelin. First is gonna be the ER7, ERC721 URI storage, just to make it easy to set the URI. I am importing counters um, for the um, ID of the NFT itself. Strings, which is a really cool utility that I'm going to use to convert um, numbers to strings, which I'll show you in a bit. Base64, uh, which is going to be helpful for actually um, creating on-chain um, 
NFTs. So everything that we do here is going to be completely on chain. Um, no storage will be used off chain. So let's take a look at the contract itself. It's an ERC721 verifier. You can call it whatever you want, but it inherits everything from the ERC721 URI storage as well as the ZKP verifier. Um, there's a couple of variables here. This is really just keeping track of the addresses that have already minted and making sure that people only mint once. I'm using strings, which I imported from Open Zeppelin for unsigned integers, which basically gives all of my unsigned integers um, the power to become strings. Um, counters, um, which will be for my token IDs. Constructor is just going to um, uh, deploy the ERC721, but now we get into the cool part. Before proof submit, this is um, just some boilerplate code, but what before proof submit is going to do is going to check that the challenge input of the pro proof is equal to the message that's sender. So we want to make sure the person who is actually trying to generate this proof that is trying to um, perform this action is the person who owns this specific proof. So that's what this is taking care of. After proof submit is where the actual magic happens. Uh, we first check to make sure that this proof has not been submitted before. They've only done it once. And then inside of this if statement, we actually execute the token mint. So I'm just incrementing um, the token mint right away, uh, the token ID right away. Um, the token ID from counter generally starts at zero. I just like it starting at one, so I increment it. Uh, I get the current token ID, and then I call safe mint with message.sender, as well as the new item ID. And then I set the token URI using the item ID and this get token URI function that I'm going to show you in a bit. So here, next part, this is what makes this token a SOBAL token. This before token transfer is going to override the ERC721 before token transfer and prevent you from ever actually being able to transfer this token because your age is your own age and not someone else's. Do not verify your age for someone else. That is a frowned upon action. Two more functions here, um, generating the SVG for the token, as well as getting the actual token URI. So I'll just go through this real quick. For generating the SVG, we just have this large SVG code that is going to be encoded and returned as a string and converted to a um, data image URL. Um, all it is is just like a black square that says you are over 18, I mean over 13. Um, and I'm using the base64 encode to encode all of that together. Finally, uh, the actual get token URI, um, which is going to take um, your metadata. So this is the metadata that would appear on your NFT. So right now I'm just giving it a name, description, and the image. The name is just going to be um, 13 check. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at naming things. Um, and the actual token ID. Um, so this is why I brought in the strings package. It gives you this like nice little two string utility. Um, description, verified credential of age over 13, and then the image, which is just going to be this generate SVG for token, which returns a string. Cool. So this is this part here is nothing specific to Polygon ID. This is simply for minting an on-chain uh, soulbound NFT. Um, nothing special going on there. Cool. So now we've got this ERC721 kind of written out for us. There's two scripts in here um, that are going to be super, super important. First of all, deploying your contract, making sure you deploy it. Nothing, nothing special here. I'm just taking my um, you know, um, contract, deploying it onto Polygon. The next part is going to be this set request um, script over here. So this is another thing that you'll be able to copy and paste. Most of this is boilerplate code. But there's a couple key things that you can change depending on your use case. So the first thing is going to be um, your, the address where your uh, contract was actually deployed. So this is my address that I deployed earlier. And the actual query that you want to do and you want to check for. So the query that I want to check for here is to make sure that the person who supplies their date of birth, that this date of birth is um, less than um, or before uh, January 1st, 2009. I think I did the math correctly, that should make you 13. Um, but if it's not, just pretend it is. Um, and you can take a look at um, this link here, uh, which will show you um, the ZK query language, which is going to help you actually uh, set up this query. But this operator here with the number two, I believe it means less than. 
Um, so it's going to check if like you're less than, your date of birth is less than this. So you have your issuer that gave you that credential. This query is what's going to check that credential and make sure that you're a 13 year old. So we've got that. So you run both of those scripts, great. Everything is now on um, the on the blockchain. Um, let's take a look at a front end uh, that actually implements this. I have a little code sandbox here. Cool. Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is a very basic uh, React application that I forked from my friend Steph, um, who did a version of this in Bogota. Um, but here, what we're going to do is claim our soulbound token um, on Polygon Mumbai. All you have to do is make sure you have your Polygon ID wallet, that you issued yourself a claim that has your date of birth, then you scan this. So rather than me taking out my phone and doing this here and you not being able to see it, uh, I'm going to show you a video of me doing this earlier. This is like, okay, well, I'm on Wi-Fi. Great. So this is my Polygon ID uh, wallet. Uh, I've opened it up. I already have my claims. I scan the QR code. It generates a proof request. So I hit continue. It's going through creating the cryptographic proof. And it wants to connect to a wallet. So I'm going to connect it to my MetaMask wallet. And through MetaMask, I am just going to make sure that I connect to the actual website. Once I'm connected to the actual website, it's going to fully generate the proof to make and do that check. Uh, after it does that check, the last thing it needs to do is actually mint the NFT. So we're going to go back to MetaMask, which will just pop up, and now actually approve the transaction to mint the NFT. So I hit go ahead and confirm that transaction to mint. And once um, that has been minted, pay some gas, confirm, and it'll finish up the process here. So you'll see over here on my Polygon scan link uh, about seven hours ago, I um, successfully minted this NFT. Was it a success? And this is the NFT on OpenSea right now. So on OpenSea test nets, you can check out uh, 13 check number one, um, verify 13 or older. Uh, you cannot transfer this to anyone else. This is only available in the wallet this was, that this was minted in. But now, what do I do with this, right? Um, I have this specific NFT now. I've uh, with a proof that I am 13 years of age or older. Great. It's wonderful. So now I can do really cool things with it. Token gated access to social apps built on Lens. You had, you know, the whole problem that I mentioned before with Instagram, with Twitter. Do you want to keep sending them your date of birth over and over again on every single platform that you're, you know, on? You're sharing your data uh, across all of these platforms at times if they need to do some deeper you know, verification, maybe you're asked for an ID. Like why, what is the need to go into all of that and share with them that data? Using this specific NFT, they don't need to know your date of birth. They know that this was issued by Polygon ID through an issuer that they trust. In this case, it was just us, but if it was done through an issuer they trust, then they know that they don't need access to your information. They know that you own this NFT, you can get access to the platform. You never have to share your actual age with social media platforms ever again. Just a verification of the fact that you're old enough. So you're only sharing information that they need to know and nothing more than that. And you own your data and you're not actually going forward and sharing all of it. So I wanted to make sure you have some additional resources. Um, this is you know, a new thing, a new concept to kind of like learn. Um, these will also be put into the Discord. Um, so. First, definitely check out Steph's um, original Polygon ID workshop from East Bogota. Um, she's here, and um, you can definitely uh, dive uh, a little bit deeper into that as well. Uh, there are two GitHub repos from Steph and one of our teammates, Manny. Um, both of those go into um, using this with ERC-20 tokens, as well as another example with NFTs. Um, Manny's um, GitHub also lists like some like potential error messages, common things that you might run into while you're going through and building all of this. So definitely take a look at that. And um, the last thing will be the um, Polygon ID docs and tutorials um, that you definitely want to go through. So while going through this, I remember I forgot to actually go over one thing. So we're going to go back 
to the front end, uh, just so you're aware of that, what that one thing is. It's a very vital thing for you to actually do this. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's go back. So how did I actually make this QR code work? I never told you that part. So um, in this uh, React application, we're just using this QR code generator uh, to generate a proof request, uh, which is just going to be a JSON object with a bunch of information. Um, it's going to be a, lot, a bunch of it. Again, it's going to be boilerplate code. Once you go to this um, link over here, it'll tell you exactly what you need to fill out. Some of it is going to be information from the claim that you issued. Um, so you have to make sure you have that in there properly, um, as well as the actual deployed contract address, which I added up here and used as a variable down here. But all of this information needs to be put into your QR code. So you take this JSON, um, put it into your QR code, and that's, what's, that's how this is generated. You scan that with your Polygon um, ID wallet. Um, it reads all of this information, including the contract address, as well as um, the type of credential that it needs to verify. And that's what's going to kick off the whole um, process for doing the NFT mint. So all of that is going to be available on this um, link over here on the Polygon ID GitHub, which will go through the query language on how to create this specific query. Um, throughout the weekend, myself and Steph will also be here. Um, so we'll be able to help you with any further questions that you might have as well. Um, but uh, again, these are some of the resources. I will send them in the Discord um, after this so that you have them and you don't have to take a picture um, and like retype it or whatever. I'll also send these slides. Recording of this will also be available. Um, if you did enjoy this workshop, please let us know. We're at 0x Polygon Devs. I'm also at Rahat Codes. And um, there's a couple minutes left for questions. Anyone has? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately, the um, security of your wallet is up to you. Um, so that this is, does not solve for that specific problem. Um, there are cool things in the works like account abstraction and things like that that'll hopefully help with things like that. So that might be a good way to combine Polygon ID with like an account abstraction project. Um, so right now, um, this is all on testnet. On mainnet, there is an implementation with the Polygon DAO. Um, and through the Polygon DAO, there's verification for like age credentials and things like that. So that is possible. Um, so as we have, as we roll out and put this into, um, you know, mainnet, we'll be able to uh, give you more information on that. Yes. So in, in this specific case, I created claims myself, um, just like, to do the test, but um, the claims would have to be coming from trusted issuers, right? So whoever is doing the verification has to trust this issuer. So um, if you're trying to um, go on to like a social media platform, they might have specific issuers that they work with. So they might say, get yourself verified through this. Um, and if they say that you're good, you're good, right? Um, so that, uh, kind of like falls into that triangle of trust. Yep. Yeah, um, so the, um, a lot of them will have to be um, centralized just because of the nature of like what they're verifying. Like if they're verifying like your passport ID for like, you know, proof of personhood or um, verification of date of birth, um, that all exists on centralized servers. So has to be from a centralized um, kind of like source of truth. 
but um, what we're doing here is like taking that verification and allowing you to kind of control where it goes and only share the information with like specific platforms that need it. Um, I would, so the Polygon ID wallet is really just for the um, holding your claims, but um, the actual like transactions and everything that happens would happen in any wallet you choose. So in the demo I showed, it went to my MetaMask wallet. Um, so that side of things, the actual transactions will be with whatever wallet you have. The Polygon ID wallet is really for holding your claims. Cool. Question here? Yeah, something like that would definitely be a really good use case. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know the specifics around that, but um, I think that's a very good um, thing to be working on. Um, I don't know like the roadmap for like how verifiers will work in the future. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? No, they just need to trust that the issuer will do their job correctly. Yeah, I mean, um, so, I mean, the example I showed here was like doing some like on-chain verification um, with that NFT, but you could, you know, bring in something like ENS, like this is a person verified to have some ENS credential or whatever, um, and bring that as like a claim. Um, so that as we kind of like build out the um, issuer side of things, um, these are different use cases you could potentially bring in. Cool. Well. Um, thank you all for coming out today. Um, we'll be around for any further questions.